come out to the what? To the wrath of Allah, to the anger of Allah. As soon as that call comes in, that soul runs away. She doesn't want to come out. Straight away goes inside. So he pulls it. And when the way he pulls it, it's like you pull uh, a thorn away from a, a wet wool. That means it comes, something comes out of it. So there'll be veins, blood, you even can't see it. Taking it out. Call until he comes up, takes it out. As soon as it is in hand, those angels around him will take it. And they will put it with the shrub that they pulled it from the hellfire. With the hamu from the hellfire. Musuh is called. As soon as they put it in that shrub, worse smell comes out of it. Not even a single smell on the earth will be worse than that smell. And they will ascend. As soon as they arrive to the first heaven, they want to open. And if each angels will ask, who is evil soul? They will say so and so, the son of so and so with the worst of names that he is to be named with in this dunya. Until they arrive to this uh, first heaven, they will ask to come through, so he will not be given the permission. And then it's when the Prophet ﷺ he recited, قال, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَلَا يَدْخُرُونَ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا تُفَتَّحُ لَهُمْ أَبَرُ السَّمَةِ وَلَا يَدْخُرُونَ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى يَلِجَ الْجَمَلُ فِي سَنْ الْخِيَاطِ the gates of the heavens will not open for them, nor they will enter paradise until you put the camel to go through the eye of the needle. That's in them, it's impossible. Because it's impossible to put the camel through the eye of the needle, it's impossible for those to enter paradise or to be having the gates of the heavens to be open. So he would say, write his book in Sijin, the lowest of the earth, and then his soul will be dropped onto his body. He who disbelieves in Allah is like he had fallen down, dropped from the heaven. Like the bird snatched him or the wind took him away into a deep valley. So his soul will be dropped down and then that moment he would hear the footsteps of his relatives leading him. And now the angels will come. Aswadani, Azraqan, same but terrifying, black, blue colors. And they will make him to sit down. And then they will ask him, Who is your law? Uh, don't know. Who is your religion? Ha uh, don't know. Who's that person being sent to you? Ha uh, ha. They will tell him, Muhammad, can't, they can't remember him. No, uh, so there will be a caller and Kelab, he's a liar. Give him everything from the hellfire mattress, pillow, everything from the hellfire. And give him clothes from the hellfire. Not only that, a and then the grave will be sort of tightened on him so much until his bones are dislocated. And then they will ask him to, as well, to put a gate for him or a door to hellfire. And that's when, as soon as the fire comes, you know, as soon as you feel the heat and the smell of the pus or the burning, it comes to you. And then there will be a person with an ugly face, ugly clothes, and ugly smell. He will say, This is your day that you'll be promised. Who are you, you ugly man? Who your face bring disaster. So you say, I'm your bad deeds. I used to know you that you are very fast in disobeying Allah. And very slow in obeying Allah. And this is when the Prophet Sallallahu he said, there will be a person, he will be having a sledgehammer, big hammer. As soon as he sees it, he will, you know, hit him with it. And there will be a big shout. The animals will hear it. And inanimates will hear it. But the jinn, the man can Allah hear it. Because if you if we hear it, if we hear it, as the Prophet Sallallahu he said, if I wanted you to hear what is happening in the graves, you will never bury your deceased. You will ask, please put me in the fridge, not put me in the land. Why? Because of terrifying sound. And the Prophet of Allah, Wallah, he said, Wallahi, I have the power to call Allah to make you hear some of the punishment of the grave. But, I'm afraid you're not going to bury one another. I said, oh, how terrifying that. So, subhanAllah. And the sledgehammer will hit him, and he will turn him into, even if it hits a mountain, he will turn him to dust. <coughs> so he will hit him, he will die, bring him life again, and they will be hit, same thing. And that is why he, this person, when he sees the hellfire, still, he will say, So the coming stage is going to be what? Harboring, because of the hellfire. So this is hell. Or this is preparation for the hell. And that is why, if you are, well, alhamdulillah, your first stage, which is second, which is the Barzakh life, you are affirmed, what comes after that is easy. 
But if you haven't got confirmation, what comes after that is hana. So that is why when Uthman is being mentioned to him, the grave, he would die, he would cry. And when something to do with paradise and hellfire is mentioned to him, he does not cry. He was asked about that. It's a bonding. He said, verily, the grave, the barzakh, is the first stage of the hereafter. If you are okay in that stage, it will be easier for you later on. So if you want to have a good life in that barzakh, in order to have a good as well outcome and consequence later on, and make sure that you work now. This is the dunya that you need to work. You can't work in the barzakh. You can't say, in the barzakh, I'll be good, inshallah, I'll behave myself. You can't do that. This is the test life. There is no test. There's a, huh? There's a stage that's going to prepare you for the bigger stage. So make sure that you do your good deeds. Now, we are encouraged by the Prophet of Allah to, encourage, to exalt our deceased before they die to say, La ilaha illallah. So you come to him, he's about to die, or is in his last illness, you say to him, Say, La ilaha illallah. Now, you say it. If he said it, don't tell him to say it again, unless he said another word. So if he said a different word after that, then make him to say La ilaha illallah. Because he who departs this dunya with La ilaha illallah on his lips, he will enter paradise. So the person, if he dies with La ilaha illallah, he will be resided on that word. And that is why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayuha alladhina aam, ittaqu Allah, wa la tamutunna illa, wa ittaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih, who you who believe fear Allah should be feared. And by not accepting the state of Islam, Ibn Kathir regarding this verse, he says, and how can I die as a Muslim? I have to live as a Muslim. Because Allah made a universal law. That if you live on something, you die on it. And if you die on something, you will be resurrected on it. That's how it is. Man mata ala shay'in, man asha ala shay'in mata ali. Wa man mata ala shay'in bu'itha ali. He who lives on something, he will die on it. And if he dies on something, he will be resurrected on it. So make sure that you are a person who is dhikr. To be as well dying on dhikr. It's not easy to say, I will say la ilaha illallah. I'll just do all the sins now and I'll say la ilaha illallah. Believe me, you will be doing what you used to do in this dunya. And it comes to my mind just now, a story was quickly. And this is, I've seen it from two... You know, they are, one of them is atheist, and the other one maybe Christian. They were climbing a mountain. It's called touching the void. If you want to, as well, go to YouTube. It's touching the void. It's called touching the void. They used to, they went to, you know, because these people they go climb, and they got this adventures, and it's like, I call them suicides. They go up there, and something had happened. What happened to them when they one of them broken limb? And because of broken limb, it means death, because you can't move, and it's pretty, it's the lower end, it's too little, too much. Anyway, got to the stage that, that his friend got to a cliff and he can't see him, so he had to cut the rope and he left him. So he went inside a hole in the crevasse, crevasse inside, and he was there and it took him five days. That guy, bit by bit, and he had found himself, you know, and then it's a, it's a story until he found the camp. If he left the camp as well, these guys, he would have been dead. But he found them the last moment. Now, in his last moment, what he says is he's about to die. Because you know his last thing. So he says, what came to my mind? I remember even, uh, he says, body M or something, song. Why came to his mind? Because he sings it all the time. Because he was doing that, it came to his mind. Just before, oh, alas, he's done. So he said, remember, I remember that song came to my mind and then I fainted. And then when he was friendly, he woke him up. So you don't want to die on a song, do you? You want to die on La ilaha illallah. So how can I do say La ilaha illallah when I die? I keep to say it while I am alive. And that's when the Prophet said, he said, he who amongst you, able to die in Medina, then let him do so. That means you visit the Medina, to die in the Medina. You can't just live here in Bedford and say, I want to die in Medina. Oh Allah, make me to die in Medina. You can't do that. You, have, you can't be transferred to Medina. You have to go and visit the Medina in order to die there, so you have a chance. So if you be sincere, and the Prophet is not saying to you, go to Medina and kill yourself then. It doesn't mean that. It means, Visit the Medina as much as possible. And that's when you are going to fulfill your wish. And lots of people, alhamdulillah, were living here, they made sincere wish, and they were buried in the Medina. Lots of people. Only about two weeks ago, this person died in Medina. Which I know, used to come to Al-Fajr. He went to Hajj and he died in Hajj, mashallah. And his son was so happy. So happy. Now, 
So we tell our people to say La ilaha illallah. Now, there is good signs of ending and bad signs of ending. From the good signs of the ending, that means you see a person has got these signs, that means it's a good ending. A person who dies, dies on La ilaha illallah. A person dies with sweat on his forehead. A person dies on the day of Jumu'ah. And those are the gods, hadiths and proofs because of the time. And a person dies as a mujahid. And a person dies as a martyr, that means. A person dies while he is fighting. A person dies with a plague. A person dies with something to do with cholera or something with a stomach illness, like a colic. A person dies because a debris is falling into him. A woman, she dies because of her pregnancy. Her pregnancy, you know, made her to die because of that child of hers inside the fetus will pull her to Jannah through her belly cord. SubhanAllah. Belly cord. And the person who dies as well upon righteous good deeds, these are the signs which are of a person who is dying a good deed, a good, a good way. From those signs which a person dies on a bad way is that when his outward is different from his inward, this is a bad sign. Prophet of Allah وسلم, he was in a battle and there was a man fighting. So he said, before he fight, he said, this man is in the hellfire. Who he told him? Allah. Revelation. So when the fight started, this man was fighting fiercely, the enemies. Until, you know, the companion said, Messenger of Allah, the person you said is in the hellfire. He's fighting crazy. We can't fight like him. He said, he's in the hellfire. So one person said, I'm going to be his companion. I'm going to see what's going to happen to him. When that man was fighting, he had lots of injuries. So what he did the last moment, he put the sword and he went to top of it to kill himself. <laughs> Committed suicide. Hypocrite. Soon as that man saw it, he said, Sadaq Allah wa Rasul. Say the way must be Allahu Akbar. I've seen that man, you said he's in the hellfire. All the companions were in the hellfire. That he had killed himself. What's a bad ending? It's a bad ending. So when a person which has his outlook, his outward, different from his inward, well, he had a billah. And also, Aisha, she said to the Prophet, he said, the man would do the act of people of paradise. As the people see, like the people will see him, mashallah, just before he dies, he would act upon the actions of the people of the hellfire, and he would die upon it, because Allah exposes reality, and vice versa. A person who is wicked, and mashallah, Muslim, wicked, and he does all these wicked things, and this is the action of the people of the hellfire, as the people can see. But because his heart is clean, Allah makes uh, qadr, makes his facilitation for him, to make the action of the people of paradise. They will die upon it and they will enter paradise. So you can't never say about a person who is a, an evildoer, a person who is not good, a person, Allah will not make you enter paradise. It's called the Ali Allah. You're making yourself as a God. And you remember this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, whom the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Allah said, Man Who is making himself a God beside me? These two men, these two men, one of them is righteous, and the other one is a believer, but he is a wicked person. He does like, you know, there's sins. So the person who is the righteous told him, off, stop it. And he didn't stop. And stop it. He said, Allah, did Allah send you on, on me as a, to be a watchman? Did Allah send you upon me a watchman? He said, Wallahi, Allah will not forgive for you. How do you know that? That's when Allah said, he was making himself. God. So they both die. The person is in front of him. You have said he's not going to go. I'm not going to forgive for him. I forgive him for him, and you go to the hellfire. The person who said in himself as a God, the pious, is in hellfire. And the person who is the one who has done the wicked or the evil, he says to him, you go to paradise. So make sure you don't really judge people just by their outward. You could say that if this person died upon the sin, he was a Muslim. It's going to be something terrible, but you can't say he's in hellfire. You could say that if a person dies on kufr, he will be a kafir, he will be in the hellfire. But you can't say a person he's in the hellfire when he's alive, even as a kafir. You can't say that because he might embrace Islam. So you can't make yourself as a kafir. That's why the Prophet وسلم, he made dua against the kuffar of Quraysh. They are making them all in the hellfire. So Allah says, It's not for you, Muhammad وسلم, to determine the fate of these people. And all of these people, whom the Prophet of Allah called against them, Safwan ibn Umayyah, Abu Sufyan, they embrace Islam. You give them the companions. So Allah told him, it's not 
you, it's not from your, uh, uh, you could say, from your uh, task to designate people from the hellfire or not. Now, as we have said, the person, there are some as well texts which is not authentic. I'm not going to go through it. Like for example, the uh, uh, angels are crying of the heavens, are crying of the person. That's not authentic. Or the person as well, um, and the, who is uh, washing the deceased, the person who is dead, he will feel the person who is you know, washing him. You know, all of that is as well unauthentic. Um, we also say that um, uh, you know, the, the, the deceased as well, when he's dead, maybe that the body will speak, but it's not the way that we speak. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Asri Obel Janaz, when you are having the person who's dead, then hurry up and bury him. Because this, if it's righteous, it would say, Qaddimuni, Qaddimuni. Come on, quickly, bury me, bury me. So that word, Qaddimuni, Qaddimuni, we don't know how it says it. We can't hear it, but we believe it. Uh, so if it is a good, so you have something good that you are putting in. But if it is no good, well, akhirun, don't be back, I don't want to be. So you will be taking something away from your shoulders, it's a burden. So always hurry up in burying the janazah. Right, now, as well, we have, um, because it is quarter to six, and I, I need to finish by quarter to six, but I will give you another ten minutes. Um, let's just talk about now the, the shroud. The shroud, the person, Prophet ﷺ, he said, Hassinu beautify your shrouds. The person, he will be resurrected in the shrouds. How can we reconcile that he will be resurrected naked? And will be resurrected in the shroud? The reconciliation between this, that there will be two resurrections. The first one, when the trumpet sound, he will come out of the grave. He will come out of the grave in your garment. So, your shroud. So that is why you make your shroud good, which is three pieces. So the shroud of the person who is mujahid is his own clothes. And it could be as well another shroud, no problem. But the shroud of the person who dies in the state of the haram is his own tongue. He will come out of that grave making talbiyah. Because he's got the clothes of what? Wuhrim. People are worried. He says, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Coming out of the grave. SubhanAllah. Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Labbaik Allah Jalika Labbaik Labbaik. Dying in the state of the haram. After that, there will be the gathering. Al Hashim. In that gathering, this is when the person will be gathered naked. And even that piece which has been taken away will be returned back. For circumcision, circumcised part. It will come back to you. Ghulna, Hufa. You don't know nothing. No clothes. And that's what Aisha she said, Messenger of Allah. Uh, how can me men and women together, we're not looking at each other. This will be discussed inshallah in our last class, which is in two weeks, which is the stage after the grave, talking about paradise and hellfire, talking about the Nizam and the Salah and so on and so forth. So here, so quickly, we say that the person needs to beautify his shrouds. Um, what else I need to as well add to it? I think this is most of the thing. There are things to do with the graves, uh, which is, I want to show you more. Which is, is it, permiss is it possible for the person to hear people who are being punished in the grave? It is because we have from Ahl Sunnah al Jamal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could make a karam for a person. They could hear something. But I can't use that to make people to enter Islam. It's for you. And it happened. And Awam ibn Hawshah, one of the companions. And it's a hadith which all children and many authenticates. That is, one day he goes to the graveyard and it was Asa time. There was a woman who was netting her wool. Another one which is younger. The grave where the woman she's netting next to it, it opened. And you could see that. And a man came out. And he started braying like a donkey. You know the brain of the donkey. Three times. And then he went inside and the grave locked. Terrifying scene. So he asked the woman, who is not the one that he was, what, what is this? It looks like this phenomenon took place more than once. So she said to him, what she knows, that that person is the son of that woman. That woman is his mother. He got drunk. And he keeps keeping drunk. 
And his mother, she didn't even fear Allah. Before you die, fear Allah. So he died at the Asr time. That's when the Asr he come. At the Asr time. And he told her before he died, why are you telling me to stop drinking? You are brave like a donkey. Telling his mother. And that is because of this, Allah made him what? For a particular time, how long Allah Ta'ala Alam, to come out of the grave three times, to say, oh, you know, you are a donkey, himself is a donkey. And this has been seen. Wallahi, I want to say it's authentic. Oh, she can have many it's authentic. So, the Prophet Sallallahu when he passed by his camel, and his camel just jolted, and he's about to drop from it. And one of the companions with him as well, he was insulting that. He said, no, 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 no. He asked, is there any graves for the mushrikeen there? Any graves? He said, yes, go far, graves there. He said, That's why the animal jolted, because of what? Because the sound of the punishment. In the Qayyim, he says, if you have something wrong in the stomach of your sheep or goats or whatever, take it to the graveyard of the kuffar. Make a walk there, she might have something to move it. <laughs> Do you understand that? It's like a medicine. So if you've got something wrong with your sheep or something that causes pain, take her to the kuffar graveyard, let her pass by there. She might jolt because she might hear the sound. But not every second is a sound. So when the Prophet ﷺ passed, he asked, what is it? Graves? Yes, yeah. Kuffar, mushrikun graves. The Prophet ﷺ said, well, he was passing by grave. And then he saw two graves and he said, very. He asked for a palm leaf. Palm, date palm leaf, and he put it in there. And he said, these two, the owners of the grave, he did not mention their names. We don't know them. They are being punished. But they're not punished in something that people consider to be something big. Something small because of it. It's big in the eyes of Allah. One does not clean himself from the urine, which is called stinza, stinja, or stibra. Second one, he makes riba, backbiting. So he said, may Allah make this punishment of this to be less as long as the what? Palm leaf is green. Now this is only for the Prophet of Allah because I've seen some of the graves. Some people bring palm leaves and put it in their graves. They say, may Allah, you know, but how do you know that your friend or your relative is being punished? It's only for the Prophet of Allah. And how? So they put palm leaf, they put now flowers, they put, hey, that's not right. We do a lot. The grave is supposed to be great, which is a simple one. So those people who are everything in the Prophet of Allah, the companions will not do that. The companions will not do that. So the person needs to know that the grave is a land either of punishment or a land of delight. And the, and the graveyard of the Muslims should be separated totally <coughs> between the great of the non-Muslim. Not just separation, which is like uh, uh, next to each other. No, no, separation by either a road in between them or a fence separating them because the believers have to be separate from the disbelievers. Now, any questions now is for you. Hmm? Follow